I'm going to share a story while Greg gets this uh, microphone dialed in a little bit. There we go. All right. So uh, recently, my youngest daughter, Aaliyah, got the opportunity to attend and perform in her first concert, the spring concert. She is playing the clarinet. She just started in January. And... Um, She's in the, what they call the beginning band. And so in the program, as we were waiting for her group to play, we see an old favorite for new beginners, the song Hot Cross Buns. Great song to start with as a beginner. And so they began to play this song, and I'm listening to it, and there's probably about... 13, 14 in the group playing along, and they're going, and I'm listening, and I'm trying to hear the hot cross bun part, but it's just not coming, and they play, and they play, and then it's done, and everybody claps, and I look at my wife, and I said, what was that? <laughs> I didn't know what it was. It was this terrible noise. It didn't sound anything like hot cross buns. I was like, well, I don't know. I, mean, I thought they were a little better than that, but evidently not so, which leads me to our first scripture. I'm just going to read part of it in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4, and it says, there are different kinds of gifts. And to say that the beginning man had gifts after that performance would be a stretch at the least. It was rough, but, you know, the audience, the audience needed, you know, has to do what they have to do. You know, you're going to give that applause. But everybody was kind of looking at one another going, that was a train wreck. <laughs> but I want to contrast that with some more of what Jeff was just reading in 1 Corinthians 4 or 12 in verses 4 through 6 where it says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And there are different kinds of working, but in, in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. And if you continue on to verse 7, it says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So, what we see in verse 7 is that the Holy Spirit is manifest each of these three things, the gifts, the service, and the working. And so we have this triune God with all of these different kinds is what I'll call them, and yet they are the same. They don't diminish who each of them are in the Godhead. So the thing that I want to focus on on and hopefully help us to understand in this context with the Trinity in light of verse 7 is that there is unity and harmony shared in the Trinity that is for the good of the whole, not exclusively for one part as manifested by the Holy Spirit. So there's this harmony and this unity, even though there's all these different kinds that are happening. Which brings me back to the story of hot cross buns. Because that wasn't the end of the story. So when they had finished, the conductor turned around and faced the audience. And he said, well, this is kind of how they sounded when they started. We're actually going to play how they are now. And so after playing the second time, I was like, that's so much better. It actually sounds like hot cross buns. So we had a good laugh at it. My, my wife was in on the joke, so she was just busting out laughing when I turned to her and said, I don't know what that was. 
I'm clapping, but I'm not sure what I'm clapping for because that was really bad. So as we continue on in this section, we're going to be kind of working our way through 1 Corinthians 12, kind of 4 through 13. We get to the next section of what Paul talks about are the gifts in verses 8 through 10. I'm not going to read through all the verses, but I want to just share with you. There are nine gifts that are referenced there. They are wisdom, knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. So one of the reasons Paul is bringing out all these gifts is not to just let them know these are the gifts. They know the gifts, but basically Paul is responding to this question from the church in Corinth regarding spiritual gifts, specifically that there are some who feel that the gift of speaking in tongues is of paramount importance. And every member should aspire to it as the pinnacle of spirituality. So some of the Corinthians were using the gifts that they had been given through the Holy Spirit to build themselves up by defining which of the gifts were better and to be desired than other gifts versus building up others and their relationship with Christ through all of the gifts. So for these members, it seemed better for everyone to have the same gift rather than to have the diversity of the gifts. And so back to our story of hot cross buns, in the first part of it, everybody was kind of playing their own thing, trying to outdo maybe the other performers that were, were playing. And so what we ended up with was this cacophony of just sound that sounded like noise. It didn't sound like music. It didn't sound like anything. This is not good. Because the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for the benefit of the common good, not the individual. One gift is not better than another. So as we continue to kind of move through this, we move into what I call a section where the spirit, a spirit-led person creates unity within the diversity. And so when you look at verse 11, just as a reminder, it says, and all these are the works, all these gifts are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes to each of them just as he determines. Paul, again, he's reminding us that all these diverse gifts are because of the Holy Spirit based on what the Holy Spirit decides to distribute. The spiritual gift received is not because of what we've done, what I've done, what our social economic status is, or the people we know. The spiritual gift, no matter what the gift is, is equally important in its function for the church body as the Holy Spirit determines. And so this is where we have to also be spirit-led. Not mic-led, not culture-led, not politically-led, not movement-led, not it feels good-led, and deciding for ourselves or based on other influences what's best. So here's, here's one example of how the Holy Spirit leads us. If we look at verse 3, a portion of it, the latter part of verse 3, it says this, and it says, And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, that may seem way too simple of an example of being Spirit-led, but it's true. And let me kind of help us understand that a little bit more clearly. You and I cannot make this confession apart from the working of the Holy Spirit. Because for the person who is not led by the Spirit, they cannot say these words and believe 
in their being that Jesus is Lord as a true statement. Spirit-led, just even being able to say, Jesus is Lord, and to know that. There's no question, there's no doubt. That is Spirit-led. And in being Spirit-led, we become something more, much more than ourselves, because we surrender. We surrender ourselves to follow Christ and begin to use our gifts given to us for the good of others. So this has all been a build-up to what I really want to focus on for the rest of our message this morning, and that is the one body, many parts, which is what I've titled this message, one body, many parts. And so as we move into verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 12, it says, just as one body, the one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. The Holy Spirit creates such diversity in the gifts bestowed to each of us. And amazingly, within all this diversity, the Holy Spirit creates unity as individuals in the body of Christ. And and how I'd like to maybe illustrate that is to illustrate it with this. Think of a symphony orchestra. Some of you may have been able to attend an actual concert with a symphony orchestra. I want to break it down into a few things. So in a symphony orchestra, you have four main sections. You have the strings, you have the woodwinds, you have the brass, brass, and then you have the percussion. And in that orchestra, there may be, on average, about 100 musicians that make up that orchestra. And for the conductor who is leading the orchestra, there may be anywhere from 14 to 17 different parts played, all of which the conductor leads. All these different parts because we've got all these different instruments. So I want to, let's look at that unity piece of it. So in that orchestra, just to give a little more broader context, there may be 20 to 27 different instrument types. So you've got violins, you've got the harp, you've got French horn, you've got the trombone, you've got the double bass, you've got the clarinet, you've got the flute, to name a few. So a lot of different instruments. And so with that can present a little bit of a challenge to be in unity, And so that can be a challenge even within the church body. Now, something that's interesting, I didn't know this, but generally, well, if you go to the Kennedy Center, this is what they say, before the orchestra begins to play, the lead oboe player plays the A note. And why do they play the A note? It's so that all the other players with their instruments can sync up to make sure that their instrument is playing an A note for that instrument. And so you hear them, there's all this noise going on, and it sounds completely discombobulated. And they're fine-tuning and they're adjusting to get their instruments so that they all are playing an A note. Now, sometimes you might see the concert master, or that would be the first violin, who plays a note, and everybody centers on that particular note. So it brings them all together. They're playing the right note, and it's all, it's not a sharp A, it's not a flat A, it's an A. There's a part of me that wishes that I could view the body of Christ and look at it from a global view and from the Holy Holy Spirit's perspective. Because I'm sure I would see parts of the body that are thriving 
in parts that are struggling. Because Paul has this message to the folks in Corinthians that's no less applicable to us in that they were moving into spaces of not being spirit-led because of the gifts in view of what they thought their gifts were worth and how they should be used. So Paul is like saying to them, hey, you're so focused on what you have received that you're not using the good of what you've been given from the Holy Spirit for the good of others. Pay attention. The Holy Spirit. So each of us, right, has this part to be played like in a symphony as led by the Holy Spirit. And no part is less important. For example, the percussion section. Here's what I really appreciated at the concert, because they have a full orchestra at the spring concert. And I'm sitting there in the audience, and I'm watching the percussion. And so you've got the timpani, which is those big round drums. You've got somebody who's maybe on the snare. And then you have the cymbals, the person holding the cymbals. Okay? And their part is every so often. Rightfully so. Can you imagine the cymbals? You know, the whole orchestra, you know, the whole time the orchestra's playing. No, it just would not work. So you can see them, all the percussion people. They're back there, and they're watching the music, and they're counting, counting. And they're following along, and they're following along, and they're waiting for the right moment to clash those cymbals. And they want to get it right. They don't want to be a quarter note early. They don't want to be a quarter note late because usually when the cymbals go off, that's like this crescendo moment. It's like emphasis. So, he, you know, they're watching, watching, watching. And when they get it right, it works beautifully in the orchestra, in the music. But if they get it wrong, if they come in too soon or too late, it's like, oh, you notice. It's like... Oh, they were off. That didn't go like it needed to. So the question that I want to ask us and myself is, how well am I functioning in the body of Christ? Or how well am I letting the Holy Spirit lead me as part of my function in the body of Christ? Because Christ is the body, and he has sent the Holy Spirit to add the many parts which are in him, which are in Christ, to do what the Holy Spirit directs the body to do, to be in unity with Christ. We are one part of the body, no matter what our part is. Some of us are going to be very active all the time. Other parts, we've got this one small, specific thing that we need to do. It all matters. It all matters. We are to be led by the Holy Spirit so as to be a healthy part within the body of Christ whose body we are in. Let's continue on and look at verse 13, which says this. For we were all baptized by one spirit as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. We don't need to drink from any other source to be satisfied spiritually. This is the living water that Christ talked about, spoke about, for everyone who thirsts to come to him and living waters would flow within them. And you and I, we don't need a sports drink the world has to offer in the form of some false god that is advertised as replenishing or renewing to help us in our Christian walk in service to God and to Christ. So I hope what we can see is that in our daily walk that we seek 
to be led by the Spirit so that the manifestation of the gifts, the service, the work of the Spirit that's been given for the common good to be lived out in unity in the body of Christ shines and comes through. I want to help us visualize this, or maybe not so much visualize, but think about this point of unity and diversity, particularly as you know, I'm talking about this symphony, to help us illustrate how one body with many parts can sound like and look like. And so as we wrap up, I want to conclude by having us listen to this short audio clip. And this is a symphony piece called Wells of the North by Vadim Krokmal. And as you listen, a couple of things I want you to reflect on. Reflect on the different instruments and all the many different musicians which make up the symphony orchestra. And as you reflect on that, I want you to reflect on how beautiful the music comes out in the form with because of all of the diversity that is united playing the parts that they're instructed to play just as the Spirit leads you and I in our part in the body of Christ. And then I'll come back up and we're going to wrap up with our communion and then we'll do our benediction.
though, in the sense that that's the kind of conductor the Holy Spirit is. The body is this magnificent thing because of its Christ. It's Christ who is the body. We have a part in that body. We are every bit a part of that symphony that the Holy Spirit conducts and leads. And now we'll be led in our benediction by Pastor Mike Smith. All right. So let's say our benediction together. I know it. May the love of the Father, the tenderness of the Son, and the presence of the Spirit gladden your heart and bring peace to your soul this day and all days. Amen.